uh, it helps all the people of my age. You know, we had it was, a, it was a space where we, you know, we could get together and you know, get to really know each other from different parts of the city. And we didn't have the all the alliances like I did at the because we knew each other. We had played in the matches together, we wrestled, we camped together, and we just, as we got older, we still had those relationships. Even when I went to the boss, I would even now, they called me, you know, where I called them, we meet each other, we had a conversation next to each other's family and all. And it's just something we really have to continue to deal with our community. Uh, so that's one of the big guys. And you know, just gotta put together a song. What are you doing today? Oh, so I work at Chief of Staff uh, at the Commissioner of Mercy Bridge Office. I say, y'all, uh, I'm an attorney and I can and I work at my consulting firm also. Hey! I'm lying up. Yes, sir. I'm the guy. I'm going to get that hard next. Uh, I got to call this brother uh, because he is the actual history of Duala Scout. He was actually a Duala Scout in 1980 before I became a leader in 1981. And again, he's from the Abdul Salam family. This is Tariq Abdul Salam. What's up, please? Yeah. 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 I saw him and I was so happy. I gave him a big hug. 
And he was walking when he ran last, and he was like, yeah, I can't, you know, I'm hanging out with some of my own corner boys. And I was like, corner boys, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, you know, I was around us. I was like, I don't even, I don't even know what he's talking about. But he was telling me that that's how they came into his land. In the 70s, in the late 60s and 70s, they were gang members. And they took Shahada. And they took them out of the gangs. And they became examples for the community. The same thing that's happening right now to the young Duval Scouts who have become men who are now making examples in the city. And that's what we need. But inshallah, I don't want to be too long. We already, you know, ran past our time. But I, I love y'all, brothers, and I appreciate y'all sharing the history and letting people know where we really originated. What you doing now, Joy? I was, I retired. I don't know if I was in the for a long time. We, we hired a lot of Muslims. Then we started another company, Skating Water. We hired more Muslims. And you know, I'm, you know, I'm just developing real estate now. Thank you. Oh, I like that. Like, yeah. 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 All right, next, we got to keep moving. Um, Thank you, brother, Musa Suleiman. Oh, no. Where he at? Jawala Scout, yeah. He was a Jawala Scout. Guess what? He was my first aid person. We call it, I'm sorry, second aid person. First aid, of course, is a loss of final time. But we got in so many trips and stuff. We got caught out in the woods. Boy having an asthma attack, whatever. Guess who solved that problem? Musa Suleiman. <laughs> Brothers get caught on the rope. We're trying to cross the river. We got the rope all across the river. Who say the water fell in? Musa Suleiman. First day. Come on up here, man. I love this boy. My son. Right, my son. I'm here. Don't talk that comedy stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially on the game. Come here. I was actually uh, making my way across the road trying to save myself. That little boy just happened to be there. <laughs> but um, I'm going to be Listen, um, I want to, you know, first of all, let me get some apps to everybody. How y'all feeling? Oh, yeah. Take beer! Oh, Take beer! Oh, Take beer! Oh, I want you to listen because you got to say something after you hear it. <laughs> and brother, they work on your wives. The next time your wife's not speaking to you, she giving you the sign of treatment. Get up with a tech beer! <laughs> You trying to call her from downstairs, baby, baby, take beer. She at the top of the steps, man. More work for her. <laughs> Thank you, Herbie. I gotta give a shout out to Chester in the building too. Shout out to Chester. I wish I had a metal detector out there because there's some knives at that table, some guns too. And I want to give a shout out. I don't know who the theme of the banquet is. But I just want to know whoever decorated in here, y'all can explain with these uh, Vegas palm trees on some of the tables. Some of the other tables, they got like medieval candlesticks, there's no candles in them. There's some empty Christmas trees on these ones. I don't know, but there's no continuity to the decorations. <laughs> and I knew it was a special night because Hussein got shoes on. Hussein. And y'all got Hussein in shoes? Don't steal nothing on those. They got to be back by Monday. He ready for those. I don't know what Hussein is, but I'm going to be Listen, I want to talk uh, a story. I remember my, my first time coming to Jubal Scott Sunday Lab was through a 60th Street. Shout out to 60th Street and Lots of everybody. These brothers, brother Malik, is just, uh, it filled my heart to see these brothers here. And I remember my father, I want to tell you a quick story my father, my first time coming to um, up a dispatch game was when we were at Bell Then. Brother Colin, uh, Brother Yaya, um, yeah, Suleika was there, uh, Ali Bay, so many different people were there. And um, I didn't like it my first day, you know, because it was a new troop um, and I didn't know anybody. And so I remember that, that night I asked my father if I, if I had to go back. I didn't want to come back because I just felt out of place. And my father told me a story that I share with my boys that at the time I didn't understand the significance of it. But now when I'm older, I'm going to tell you a story because it's a story from Quran that talks about the principles, the principles of, of principle, of brotherhood and of forgiveness. And it's the story of Umar Ibn Qutan. 
And so this brother Umar was one of the one of the companions of the Prophet so Allah, he was him, and he was stern and steadfast, right? And he had he was known as being so tough, and that he gained the trust of the people because he himself stayed in a state of discomfort. And there's actually narration that he was so tough that um, Shaitan gave, gave weight to him whenever he was on the scent of Umar. And the Prophet said, if there was anyone to be prophet after me, it would be the son of al -Hitan. And so when, when Abu Bakr was near the end of his, his reign, uh, they, were, they were trying to figure out who would replace him. And he went to the other companions and he asked them, who should it be? And it was unanimous that they all wanted Umar, right? So after Umar gets in charge, my father told me the story that there were three men who came to, to Umar one day, dragging a fourth man. And they said that this man killed our father. And Umar asked the brother, did you kill what happened? And he said, well, I'm the guardian of, of a camel, and uh, the camel got into their father's farm and ate some stuff, and his father, uh, their father threw a rock, a stone at the camel and killed the camel. And he said, then I threw the stone back, and that stone killed their father, right? And so Omar passed judgment, and he said, you know, because of your admission, that uh, it was decided that he would put the, uh, that he would die, and they would kill him. So he asked Omar, if you can give me three days, to go back, get my affairs in order. My father passed, he left wealth, I have a sister. I need to get my affairs in order and then I'll come back. So they, so he asked him, Umar asked him, who's going to stand in your place? Who's going to stand in your place for bail until you return? And so he, he, he uh, called out into the crowd and somebody raised their hand, a brother raised their hand, he said, I will. I'll stand in his place until he returns. So he goes, first day he's not back. Second day, he's not back. They start worrying about the, the brother who Umar told the brother. You realize if he doesn't come back, that you will get his penalty. You're going to die. And so on the third day before Maghrib, the brother returned, right? And Umar asked him, and this is just what was so powerful to me and an embodiment of what this program is. He asked him, why did you return when you couldn't clearly escape and got away and escape this punishment? And he said, because I was afraid that it would appear that humanity has lost the ability to keep their word. Then he asked the, the man, why did you stand up in his place that you would have been killed if, if he didn't return? And he said, because I was afraid that it would appear that humanity has lost the ability to, to do good for others, to be his brother's keeper. And when the, when the three men heard this, they got emotional and they asked Omar to forgive the man and they forgive him for killing his father, and then Omar asked them, why? And they said, because we are afraid that it will appear that humanity has lost the ability to forgive. And this story, and this program, and what these brothers have done, and I want to give a special shout out to Sheikh Shuwait for what he started. He planted a seed 30, 40 years ago that is still growing like vines on a tree that has affected so many people in this program, in this building right now, the brotherhood that we've established with each other. So much so that these brothers, Brother James, Brother Muhammad, Brother Paulin, they impacted us so much of their principle and their character that throughout my life, when I've been faced with decisions, salacious ones, hard ones, difficult ones, I would ask myself, how would Brother James handle this situation? What would Brother Muhammad do in this situation? As a man, as a father, as a Muslim, when I would tell him I would be fearful, I'm like, how would Brother Khaled be brave and have courage? And so these brothers at last level, they, they left a lasting impression for so many men and women in this city that I pray that Allah just grant you all the highest level of gender for your principle, for your character, and for your dedication to men like me. Shukran, so much. Yeah. Okay, keep it moving. This family is was all the sons were the scouts, all boys. Their mother was great, great sister, the father as well. And she made sure they came to scouts every week. They were West Philly, they would come to Germantown, we'll do a Germantown Massive, they would come to Master Mohammed, we'll do a Master Mohammed. They would also come to Master the Law, who came around the old building on 77, from there to here, all the way. 
one of the brothers, Brother Scout, they did it, and that's with John Dean. And the brother who's receiving the award is Brother Sammy Atif. Brother Sammy, please. Sammy Atif. You said they had to leave? They had an emergency. They had an emergency. Okay, they had an emergency. So, Charlotte will pick up this up. Okay, we're going to take a break for a quick second and mention a Joala Scout leader. This is a man like us that had a truth. And you've already seen what this brother can do, okay? He was elected and voted as most outstanding scout leader over the last three years of Joala Scout. What he has done is un unprecedented. What he's done with young men is amazing. And I'm talking about Brother Nassim Jahad. Brother Jahad. I like about this brother here is that in truth, when you're camping trips, they all move together. They get up, go to the bathroom together. They make everything is together. We don't take no crap off of them. They do something wrong, get on the ground. I mean, push up. They're the tightest troop in the city. And this guy here, he does not take any crap off his kid. He got the tightest group, and, and I love him for it because. He's a man that's worried. He's saying he's going to be there, and he's there. Tight. Tight. Yes, sir. We know y'all here. We know y'all. Our last camping trip, we were at, um, where was we at? In the rain. Huh? Long spot, right? We had three troops. Chester, our troop. And uh, my buddy hit the table out. That's it. Uh, we got out there, the rain was kicking. So you had to have the endurance and the training to be able to stay outdoors in the rain, stay dry, right? Okay, and endure, right? Okay. Brother Nassim and the chest of truth was like a solid rock. They all had the same rain going on. Yeah, they had suits. They didn't have like ponchos. My boys had real cheap ponchos. You know what I mean? Tearing up, rolling down the hill, and all this stuff, getting wet. All these boys in the rest has been very well organized and a great scout in the show. So, uh, I think a lot of friends for even allow me to be a part of this Water Scout program. It's just that many other Water Scout programs help me save me. So I thank a lot of things. I thank the leadership for recommending me for this award. I appreciate it. But I must not go without thanking my wife. My wife is in the I So I thank you all for the and all that help, and all the sisters. Because if you don't want to turn down in Chester, the parent steps up. So I'm doing it. But I just want to remind the community that for real, for real, as men, this is our job. This is our job. To help groom our youth. We have our man, Reed, on point. We all growing our child. And it don't, it don't stop. It just goes on all the way to the grave. I tell the children all the time, work hard now, doing good, you get plenty of good rest in the grave. So I mean, uh, about, about 25, I say 25, 30 years ago, I went to Eden Avenue for and Chester said, you know, for me, we need a representative from Chester for the Duala Scouts, whatever, right? So first it was Yami, no yes, son. No yes, yeah. He said, for whatever. And then man, after him came in Brother Nasir. And he ain't looked back since. Come here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Uh, next we have UMM. We didn't mention UMM yet, but UMM also had a Duval Scout troop, and they were very, very strong. Had a lot of guys, 25, 26 scouts most of the time, and they were really good. I'm giving experience about UMM, as I call Kareem Ali up. Kareem Ali, front step. Right. We're in the Pocono Mountains, all right, the UMM troop. The Kareem Ali in there, right? This guy right here. When we went to reconnoit the place, reconnoit means you go check it before you go so the kids are okay. It was snow, about two feet of snow. So we good with that because we are practicing the snow. But when we got up there, it got real cold, so the snow was like ice. So it was all ice. And we got like 35 boys, right? We had green. Yeah, and so we had to get the tents up. It was like what? 11 to 12 o'clock at night. So, you and them, Drew, Kareem, and them. They got them done so, so fast. Dollar Man, whatever. So, those guys that were good scouts. You know what I'm saying? Very, very good scouts. Now, be it. And this was one of the leaders. All right. So, so like, uh, as brother Mom mentioned, I'm named Kareem Mali. Son to Tara. Tara, Dali, we read that. Stand up, please, please. My father right here. Um, so this 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 award right here um, is really a testament to my father. Tariq Ali, um, who had to, to be my best friend um, and, 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 and a very, very great mentor. Um, he embodies what a man is, what a father is, what, what, what a great example is. Um, and he's been that my entire life. And I just want to say Shipron to you for that, that I'm sorry, Shipron, that. that. Um, but but as, as great of a man as my father is, um, he couldn't do it alone, and uh, I, as, 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 as me and my other brothers here, we really are products of, of a village. Um, and as we all know, a lot of times it takes a village to raise, to raise, to raise a child, and um, I'm a product of that. And Brother James, Brother Muhammad, Brother Carla Evan Bass, uh, Brother Yak, Brother Salim, they, they, they were part of my village. My father couldn't give me everything. You know, he could only give me what he knew. So he sent me to Brother Yaka to learn how to swim, learn about kayak. You know what I mean? I'm, a, I'm from South Philadelphia, the heart of it, not, not, not that gentrified. Man. I'm, from the, I'm from the heart of South Philadelphia. I'm from the dirty kid in South Philadelphia. I know how to swim. I know how to shoot a bow and arrow. I know how to you know, properly handle a gun. You know what I mean? Not like it. <laughs> and, that's, and that's all the testament to the Juwaz Scouts. Um, so, I really just want to take this and, 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 and accept this as a testament to you, brother. This, this, is, this, is, this is your hard work. This is your hard work. Thank you for pouring into me. Thank you for pouring into us. Because, as we all know, we've taken about 19, 19 awards, 19 awards up here. Um, we also had the other side where, where we, we lost a lot of good brothers also, a lot of well scouts. Um, so I personally want to thank you all for saving my life. For saving, I, 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 I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I told you, from the hardest I was really, who knows where I, I would have ended up if it wasn't for the well scouts. I actually right, so should have gotten some brothers, I appreciate that. And I pray that that the actions that I, that I, that I put forth every day in life are, 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 um, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I really just thank you, brothers, man. I'm really good, man. Thank you a lot, man. I'll pray for you, brothers, every day. Sure, Brian. Thank you. This is South Philly. <laughs> 
Uh, Marie, hold on, hold on. What are you doing today? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm an electrician, certified electrician, electrician. Uh, 15 years, man. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 and, and my beautiful family over there. I've been married for 13 years also. Married for 13 years. Father of three. All right? So, and, and like I said, this is all testament to the wild You know what I mean? So men, uh, so men, they cash in, they cash in, dollar sign, Jawala, not two dub, not two dub, W's is one, J A W A L S, Jawala Scouts with the S on the end, E I N C. Don't leave them. The reality is, is that it's about fathers. It's about fathers. You didn't call us father. Most of the scouts, right, that flew through pretty easily, adapted to what they needed to do, were those who had direct connection, interaction with their fathers. Their fathers were very instrumental in their life. Very, very, very important. Hold on one second. Um, I want to thank everyone for the time, the attention, the patience. And just ask if everyone could please keep your conversations low. If you can lower your voices because we're picking up the conversation. And again, you can very much patient. Um, we're going to be going over the next couple of weeks. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you. 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 At least not for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but they have helped my son become men. And they also taught my son how to pitch tents, because I've come downstairs plenty of times with a tent in my living room full of all the Thank you very much. Now, Lord, I'm going to raise your hand without you. Sure, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next. Chester, 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 Chester. Okay, we got our brother Rakeem Lewis. What is that? Not only was he a great Jamal Scout, he came back as a Jamal Scout leader. Okay, and then was Rakeem very, very mellow. Okay, right. Rakeem. Good scout, good young man. I'll do that. Low key, right? Low key. You know, you don't say what. You better not mess with it. Okay, I'll do that. Hello, my name is. I'm the Lord of Martial Law. I think everyone here, like, on the house, uh, it's really is like a village. Like, not everyone has a father and stuff like that. So, these two, like, brothers right here, they just, like, you know, we did a good thing. And you just like move a step ahead, like your mindset, just like over everyone else's, as far as like compared to people like the same age as me. They're not thinking about the same stuff I think about. But they really want to like prioritize, like just like how to move in this world and stuff like that. So I just want to thank everyone for coming out and uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. What are you doing out there? Uh, I go to the other side. Trying to become a new uh, like Oh my God! Thank God, folks. I didn't really have this on time because I'm fresh and you know in good condition. And it's cool. Okay, keeping it moving. Another Abdul Salam. Okay, another Abdul Salam. Sensei, standing. Sensei still here? Yeah. Okay, let's call up uh, Munir Abdul Salam. I'm sorry, Munir Abdul Haq. I keep getting that wrong. It's Abdul Haq. Is he here? Oh, here you go. 
How many of that? Great scout. Great scout. Going out to be a leader. I wish I had a video of a, of a, of a marching drill that he used to do. He used to drill all the scouts. Yep. All the scouts. Yep. Hey, we got a video of him when he was probably, what, 10 years old. 10 years old. And, and that video will bring tears to your eyes. And it brings tears to him, leaving everybody. Come on! Come on! <laughs> Take, take, boy. As you go, you know, good scout, strong, always there, physically fit, morally straight. And all these guys, man, they got a history behind them. And when you see them grow up and they become a man, and they apply that stuff, it does your heart feel seriously. But I want to say one thing before we get started, Muhammad. There's a lot of credit going to me and Brother Muhammad. How many love? It goes to a lot. But let me say something to you. It's the women who brought their sons out. Right? And a lot of these women, they didn't have a man. And the child wasn't born by a magic conception. Men just weren't around. And they brought their sons every single week. They did every single trip. They paid every single dues by themselves. They are the heroes. They're the heroes. The ones who came out every single week. Let's go get them sisters by themselves who did everything that they would do if they had a man. They did it by themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not a lot of people, unlike me, uh, I keep this from home was saying the father is really what grounded them in the scouts. And for me, it was my mom. Uh, coming to scouts was might have been hard on her, and I might have known, but her getting me there, I had my father in my life, gave me a foundation that I have today. Like he said, Brother Muhammad, Brother Muhammad, my uncles. My grandfather, they all kept me grounded as a give me a father figure that I didn't have. And I really appreciate everything that I've been through in my life. Because there's one thing that Brother Allah always said, said it earlier is that we don't want to be statistic. He said by the age of 21, we would either be dead, in jail, or seriously hurt. And I think about that a lot. Like it really it keeps me going every day because I know I'm 21 now. But I my second year of being a carpenter apprenticeship, I'm a barber, uh, and all coming from just being a scout, being learning how to be a man in my life. I'm a father now, so it all just helped me be who I am today, and I really appreciate and think and value everything that they've given me in my life. There's so like more brothers, Philly, more brothers. Tar, Sujan, front son. Okay, y'all know them brothers. Tar, Taj, Taj, please. Same thing, Abu, 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 and Omi. Since I used to no joke. They brought them the scouts, and look, they all, and Sujan's got something special to say. Okay, so it's important you see these three brothers, man, that grew up in West Philly, all right? All, all the wild scouts. Brought up their mom brought every single week. Sometimes they didn't want to come, right? She made them come, all right? She really tolerated. So how many lives do you want to give? I got another for you guys, right? Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, like the brother just said, I definitely want to make sure we give it up for the parents today. Please give it up for this son. Tekbir! 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 These right here, these my old ears. Brother Bilal, Brother Muhammad, Brother Fallen, Brother Diego, all the brothers from 60th Street, Louisville, Chester. They my old ears, but these two right here, they crazy. They crazy. <laughs> these guys had this marshal on German Cell Dad talking about, right in front of the corner, boys. Drugs dealers got to go. <laughs> Drugs dealers got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, remember that. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, I absolutely don't feel deserving of this award at all. 
Um, because unfortunately, I became a murderer. Okay. And it led me down the path of 12 years of incarceration. And uh, one thing I learned while I was inside, a lot of people knew each other as friends, and been to the same group and institutions. I was looking around, I'm like, ain't no one else in it. <laughs> no, nobody from Cooper School, none of them was from Virginia. I was like, ah. And, and, and as I got to know the character of the people on the inside, I realized he was different. He was different. They, they, didn't, they, they weren't really standing for anything. You know, they didn't really have a backbone. And I realized, man, I, was, I wish they had given me, always given me another challenge to, to have the kind of whether it was pitching a tent, being, being you know, uh, camping in the, in the forest, whether it was wrestling. Or, you know, I, I remember those wrestling matches too. A couple of these people let me know. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, in, in all seriousness, I realized that Wallace had instilled in me something that I could see for the rest of my life. Just a courage and a belief and values. And, you know, I was dedicated after a couple of years in to change my life from come out here and make a difference. You know, I'm gonna let, um, thank you. This October will be five years that I've actually been back out here. Long way, man. I'm gonna let. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was really important to me was that my parents never gave up. You know, despite, you know, I made the papers and I, I, I was just making bad choice after bad choice, my parents continued to invest in me. You know, and now I'm out here and I'm producing documentaries, and that career is just continuing to grow. And I do community work in West Philly, where we provide free home repairs to homeowners, and you know, I go community gardens and all type of great projects like that. Um, but it's because of my parents. So the only way that I would really, really jump on this stage and accept the award is to do it on behalf of my parents. So I will grab that black or medal, whatever you have for me. Come to the left, please, I'll give it up. Give it up for Sister Aisha and Brother Abby from your hand. Chelsea, this is all Philly, okay? Okay? Oh, I do the tea. I do, I do the tea. Could you please come up? Yes. Okay, we're going to Chester again. Chester again. We got uh, brother Muhammad Khalid Ansari. Did he make it? Did he come? Anybody want to accept the award for him? Go ahead. Oh, Zia, yeah. Zia, yeah, thank you. Great scout, great scout. Doing great things now. Yes, sir. Thank you all the gas station now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you ain't getting away. You ain't getting away. <laughs> All right, next again is uh, Chester once again. I'm going to be the Khalid Jahan. Is he here? Just come in here. Oh, there you go. Come out. That's right. Okay. Great scout. Great scout. Great scout. Great scout. From that Jahan family. Brother that's here. Just got the award. This is his son, older son, Charlie. Yeah, I was in the wild scout troop in seventh grade. I was out here with my father, so they were seventy at the same time. So I had to go through that every day. Uh, so 
Toledo, West Philly, Shoot with John Dean, Rashid Hayes. You hear? Rashid Hayes. Okay, so I want to thank you for it, John Dean. Okay. Okay, Chester, again, they, they came out strong. See, if you take them over, they came out strong. How do you say to the board? Come in. Uh, Brother Hannibal Ward. Great stuff. Great stuff. No truth. Great stuff. Came in, came after, came enthusiast, came back to the 12th style leader, got a lot. Well, they done. All right, so I basically grew up in the Duval Scouts. I was a scout for over 10 years. And uh, a lot of the brothers that was scout leaders moved from the field to scout leaders right now. So I wanted to take the time to uh, thank Brother Nasir first and uh, all the other scout, scout leaders too. Brother Hussein, Brother Bilal. If I don't remember your name, then <laughs> forgive me, as it. <laughs> I mean, he grew up like this, you know, like that, you know, like that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Got married maybe halfway through the program. 
and that constant support, love from my wife really helped carry me on through many years of schooling um, to the point where, where I am now today as a, as a professor. Um, definitely want to thank my, uh, my siblings, uh, some of which are here now. Venture is waving her hand. So my three brothers were all members of the Wild Scouts. Um, my, my sister was an Alima Scout. So it's definitely a family affair for us. And, and lastly, I definitely want to thank the, the Scout group. So Brother Muhammad Bolar, JD, Manny Salah, Father Alfred Baskin, Jack Yaakov Kadir. Now these brothers instilled so much into me. I mean, I look at them like, like uncles. Um, you know, the lessons that they instilled in me, I find myself telling them to my kids now. We're repeating these things verbatim. And uh, maybe I'll just end quickly with this, this one lesson I remember they would always tell us was to, to never look down on people who have less than you. They, they said this like every week. Never look down on people who have less, less than you. Always thank Allah for all the blessings you have. Um, because Allah may equip you with something that you're looking down on somebody for having. So that, that level of like humility and gratitude, you know, inshallah, I try to embody within my life now and teach my kids these lessons as well. So definitely honored to, to be on the stage and uh, thank you all for, for everything you've given us. Sure. So, uh, so I'm a professor at Columbia University. I um I run a, a neuroscience research lab. So we're interested in, in how our bodies perceive uh, touch and pain, and how the central nervous system recognizes these things. Um, so my background, and I also teach as well, uh, molecular biology and genetics, and. Uh, yeah, so I run a, a relatively big research lab and teach undergrad with PhD students as well. Um, in terms of you know COVID and the vaccine, some of my friends and colleagues were involved in developing that technology. Um, you know, even in line tonight, I had a conversation with some brothers about, about the vaccine. We could that, that'll take another 30 minutes, but uh, you know, definitely a better proponent for our community to, to get vaccinated and protect ourselves. And, I know there's uh, a lot of resistance and hesitancy, um, but you know, as a as a practicing scientist, I also see that as uh, a duty of mine to inform our community, teach us about what the science is, what it, what it proves and does not prove, and to let people you know, make the best decisions for themselves. So, uh, thanks for being So, baby, go, let me see more. Go, stand up. That's his Abu right there. I told you, Abu's son. Right there. Everybody knows who that old, right? Good. That's his father. I can hear my smile. So we got to realize that as divided as we might see, we've seen a lot of our young brothers through the system that we have created have went forward, okay? to make changes in the world all the way around. All the way around. And so, for Delaware Valley, Chester, Philly, whatever, yeah. young Muslim men came through a system, okay? And that system, we're bringing home to look at the results. The basis of the banquet is to look at the results of the work that we have done. But I don't want to say one more word without giving acknowledgement to the Alima Scouts, Sister Antoinette, Sister Antoinette. All right. They take care of the system. Hopefully not jump in. Muhammad just got me so I should have done that. Sister Antoinette, the Alima Scouts, everybody works with them. I'm going to sister. We respect you. We honor you, sister. Anything we can do for the South of Wales, elite scouts, we're going to do it forever. I'm going to leave. He's scared to death. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, the next is uh, a great scout, real brother from a great family, Brother Sharif. You stand up. <laughs> brother Sharif. Right here. Yeah. Shereen has gone to Braxton. Front and center. Is your dad still here? Or no? 
Where you at, Street? Oh, you can't stand up. We got about four canes. <laughs> right. All right, Street Trapan. Father. Nothing as your father. Great mother, too. Your mother here? There she go. Everybody know her eyes. How they go? Great mom. She used to drag in this gal. No doubt about it. But Sharif, excellent scout. Excellent scout. Hi, everyone. Um, so first and foremost, I want to say, uh, I'm the lad, I thank the law for the blessing that is um, my mother, like Brother Muhammad mentioned, for being such an integral part of me being part of the law of scouts. Um, and of course, I think one of the biggest things that I said to me about the necessity of this, especially for our people, black people, is that we have a lot of generational trauma. So the Joel House is definitely a source of that generational feeling. And we see that, you know, over 50 years now, people have been like torch bearers passing that life on to one another to be a means of benefit. Um, and it's doing skills that you know, even in an urban space, it teaches you something more than just, you know, how to pitch a tent, how to hike, how to drill. It, it's teaching you how to, like, develop self-worth and understand that you as a black man or a black woman, it is in stuff like you have an anti and worth. And that's something that protects us from a lot of the things that we see um, in the community, like the violence and the killing and all those sorts of things. So I really appreciate it. Um, to Brother Jane, to Brother Muhammad, um, my family, and everyone for just being that source of life for me. And that being a means of me being able to tell all the other sources of life for you. Thank you. This is true. Elder Kwan will hop from Philadelphia, fill up message. We basically work with it. They will do a short little drill uh, called process of elimination. That means you mess up, you out. Okay? So they get commands, if they mess up, they out. And I bet you you can't tell me, or I can say you can't tell me, who you think will be the last one of these guys stand. You want the big guy? Huh? Okay, we'll see real quick, all right? The team. Two recovery. Two right place. Two left place. Two right place. Who are we? Law Scout. Who do we want to be? Service of Law. This first part of the band call. Right, 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 sir. Two left place. Two right place. So the second part of the band call. Command of execution, sir. Two. Watch out, boss. Left leg, 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 boss. Right leg, boss. Right leg, boss. Right leg, you mess up, fall out. You mess up, go down the stage, face to face troop in an A position. The winner gets paid. Gets $100. I'm like, yeah! yeah. Two left base. Two left base. That's up. Two left base. They out. Mess up, they're out. If you mess up, they out. If you see somebody mess up, you call them. Right? Two. Eddie. All right. Two. Ten. Hut. Two. Hut. Red. Red. One. Two. Ten. Hut. Peace. Prosecution, you mess up, or out. The winner now gets two hundred dollars. What's on the box? Left leg, boss. Left 
Come on, man, we got three minutes. What, what do we got? All right, let me put a child that was sold on the line right here. $800. You got $800 on the line. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man.
when we had to do this, it was last man standing. And that's what it's written. Y'all want to spin it? It was good.
I work in the gas industry. So uh, that's all I got to contribute to my parents, especially my mother. My mother's a reason why I got graduated from uh, some university in GPA with college my dad at work. If it wasn't for my mother, then I don't know if I would be doing all that stuff. Um, no extra. Um, uh, 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 I want to thank my selectmen for the tribute that came out to show off. Hoping you can get a story. This is a story they should print. We know about murder, we know about car theft. They should be here to print this story about the success of that African American sport. This is a story they should print. It should be on the front page. Not just that, but the Daily News, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and all the rest of them. They should report this story. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I like the last award. Last award for the third person. He was our MC, fantastic scout, Brother Ishmael Mohammed. I saw like the history of a couple of words. You heard him up front, but he developed fantastic music. Specifically with the one hand, which is taking off.
Yeah, well, so any, any of the guys, the fellas that have awards, if you can stay after a little bit, you must get a group shot on the stage. So, so how are you? So this will conclude the, this will conclude the entire program for tonight. Again, I ask so Almighty to reward all of you tremendously preserved you and your families at me. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more than those who are being pleased with, Ya Rabbi Ameen. To the scouts who just um, performed in the drill, drill formation and all that, and to all the young people who are still there, we leave you with a little bit of advice. There's an ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, He yakfu biha ha ulai faqad wa kalna biha qawma laysu biha bi kafirin. He said that this deen is a gift from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said to whom the people where the scripture was given and they disbelieve, we'll just take the gift of Islam and place it somewhere else where people appreciate it. So I can all of you hold on to your Islam. And all the ones who are young guys have to hold on to your Islam and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you on the street path. Ya Rabbi Amin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salli ta'ala rahmi. وعلى آله وصحبه حميد مجيد سبحان الله وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته. So I want to come. Before we all get out of here, we want to wait to make one last push for the cash out. I know you all enjoyed everything y'all saw here tonight. And I know that a lot of times you think by buying the ticket to the event that that's enough. But to be honest with you, they need money for this program. These brothers that are running this program, they show up every week, they don't get paid. Salam alaikum. Can I have everybody's attention? Can I have everybody's attention? It's very important. It is very important that we continue to fund programs like these. I've literally traveled around the world and I started a, um, a comedy tour that we were trying to bring here in Philadelphia. Just to let y'all know how serious it is when I go to other events and in Arab events, Islamic Relief Care, different events, every single time I've tried to bring this event to Philadelphia, they told me no, frankly because black people don't know me. They told me no because they don't see the value in you. And when you donate to programs like these, not only are you planting a seed, but Allah is using you as an intercessor to be able to grow this program. So it's a residual barricade that will keep on giving to you. Don't let these people think that there's no value in the black community. So I'm asking everybody that if you got a phone, and I know everybody got a phone, I'll start it off so I can practice what I preach. I'm going to donate $100 to so Money Sign Joella Scout Inc. You don't have to do $100. If you can do $5, $10, $25, we spend that every day on platters, on, on all types of ridiculous stuff. And everything that you saw here tonight is done by brothers that, that get nothing. So show all print that seed. If you want to donate, please. So by the scout, hey, we got a brother that just gave another hundred dollars. How many left? Those who record dollars. If you got record dollars, you can print them on the front of the stage. Please donate what you can. Dollar sign, Joella Scout, eight on Cash App. It's all along. Shook on, brother. I mean, everybody that donated, may Allah reward you, may Allah increase you in health and wealth, and may he allow the Joella Scouts to continue to do for another 40 years, inshallah. So, thank you. Thank you all. 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 Joala Scout Inc. Joala Scout Inc. That's the name right. Dollar sign. You gotta put the dollar sign. And then Joala's no basket. No, no, no basket. Bring the money right here. Bring the money right here. Please bring the money right here on the stage. Bring the money right here on the stage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bring the money right here on the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tell her I was fine. And she asked me something about the show or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay.